When I was 18, I was questioning if I wanted to live or not. I was drinking and taking illicit substances. I would pull out in front of big trucks and let them just barely miss me. I was reckless and desperate. I didn't enjoy school. I was always broke and dreaded the idea of getting a job. My mother was a witch and my father was already going senile. It was really bad. But one night, I had a dream that would drastically change my life forever. The dream started with me in the body of a 40-ish year old cop in a tree-filled little hick town of less than a thousand people in the late 50s. The reason I became a cop was because I didn't want to be drafted back when World War II had started. I was married to an introverted wife and we had a son and daughter, both in high school. I had a lot of pride. I wanted to treat everyone fairly, and I was proud of the fact that I had never aimed at anyone. One day, I got a radio call about this 17-year-old kid who was causing trouble again. I had run-ins with him before and went to his house to take him back to jail. His house was out in the sticks a bit. There were lots of tall trees on an acre or two of land and an old house where he lived. I had my rookie partner knock on the front door while I went around back. As soon as I got to the back of the house, the kid was standing there, about 10 feet away, with a double-barreled 12-gauge. He pulled the trigger aiming at me before I could even draw mine out. I was immediately propelled on my back. The kid ran off into the woods with the shotgun. I laid there, looking up at the treetops and the blue sky, thinking I was probably going to die right here and there. My partner came running around the back and stood over me. He moaned and then started to throw up. I'm thinking, call an ambulance, you idiot. He finally does, but he can't stop being sick, and I just lay there waiting for help. I'm surprised it didn't hurt more than that. When the ambulance comes, they arrive with even more cops and even the thief. The paramedics look at me, but just stare in my direction and don't even try to help me. This is when I see a beautiful woman walk over and stretch out her hand to me. She says, take my hand if you want to come with me. I say, lady, I need a doctor. She replies, the doctors cannot help you. Take my hand if you want to come with me. What choice did I have? Everyone else was ignoring me. I reached for her hand and she lifted me up. I looked back at where I was laying and I was still laying there. I looked back at her and said, shit, I'm dead, ain't I? She asks me, do I look dead to you? I tell her, no, you don't look dead at all. She then lets me know that I could stay here or go with her. But if I change my mind, I could always come back. We were still holding hands and I thought it would be best to go with her. Sure, I'll go with you. We started to float up in this gentle twister with her eyes on me and my eyes all over her. She seemed to be humored by my attraction to her. It took a couple minutes to go up the twister and I was still holding her hand when we landed on this cloudy plain. I looked into the distance and started to see maybe a hundred people in the distance walking slowly towards me. Slowly, I start to recognize them. They came and hugged me or shook my hand. I talked a little to all of them. I recognized them all, but not necessarily from my life on Earth. I recognized them from different lives on Earth, and some were not even from Earth. And then that lady said, the council would like to talk to you. Would you like to meet them? I'm thinking, council? Oh shit, judgment day. I thought it would be better to go now while people were still feeling sorry for me than go later after the killing had been forgotten. So I went with her to this rather informal panel of elderly men and stood before them. One of them tells me, don't be so alarmed. We just want to ask you a few questions. I reply to him, okay, shoot. They asked me, what is it like on earth? Ah, uh, it's pretty crazy down there. There are a lot of really messed up people that need a lot of help. They were very surprised by my comment and very pleased. The man in the center said, well, what happened to you down there? I said, 
didn't you see what happened to me? That damn kid shot me to death. And their smiles just disappeared. What do you mean by, he shot you to death? I'm a little taken back and I said, the kid took a 12 gauge and killed me and now I'm here. A little disappointed, he asked me, so, do you think you are dead? Now, I knew something was up. I was not about to give up my anger and lose my deserving mercy from God. I said, yes, he killed me, I'm dead, and that's why I'm here now. Shaking their heads, they asked me another question. If you are dead, how is it possible that you are talking to us? Do you think we are dead too? Well, I guess so. Isn't this the place where dead people go? They started to look at each other in dismay, and I heard them say to each other, Hey, do I look dead to you? No, you look just fine. Ah, do I look dead to you? No, you're looking okay to me too. And they chuckled a little. I was getting pissed, but they had one more question. One of them asked me, What do you think should happen to that kid? I said, He should be punished for killing a police officer. Well, it's been nice talking to you, and we hope to talk to you again soon. I thought, cool, I'm out of here, and I went left with the lady. She took me to another place and asked me if I wanted to speak with God. Horrified by the thought of facing God, I said, maybe later, he must be very busy. She asked me, what do you want to do now? Do you want to go back to earth? I said I was worried about my wife and kids, so she asked me if I would like to see how they were doing, and I said yes. I took her hand and before I knew it, I was at my own funeral. It was outdoors in the little central park and there was a big closed coffin, and I was wondering how all this could be happening already. She told me that time was an illusion and that we could go anywhere in time. I looked at the coffin again and saw my wife kneeling at the coffin, bawling her eyes out. Immediately, I was devastated. She was so sad for me. I could hear her thoughts. She was truly sorry for me, and not so much for herself or the kids. I could hear her thinking how brave I was and how she always knew something like this might happen because I was too brave and proud to pull my pistol out. I was shocked. I had always thought that she looked down on me and didn't have confidence in me. Instead, I found out she looked up to me because she saw I was a brave and true cop. I started to scream at her that I was right here. I'm all right. I'm right here. I'm fine. Don't worry. But she could not hear me. I looked at the lady and asked, why can't she hear me? My guide replies, because she is listening with her flesh and you are speaking with your spirit. I was devastated, but my guide said she would be all right. The state made sure the families of killed police officers were well taken care of. I heard my children thinking that they were happy I was killed because they could now go to college instead of being stuck in that small town. I could hear the rookie cops thinking I was an old fool who should have been more careful. I thought those rookies looked up to me. I guess I was a fool. I was just as shocked by everyone else in the town. I wondered how I could hear everyone's thoughts. My guide looked at me and without talking, she telepathically told me that the spirit hears everything. We left my funeral and went back to, who knows, some place outer space-like. She held my hand and we floated there for a while. I was shook up, but not as shook up as I thought I would be. I thought about how I told the council I was dead, and how I tried to tell my wife I was okay. I thought a little bit about my unloving kids. My guide asked me where I wanted to go next. I said, I sure don't want to go back to Earth. What else have you got? She said there were all kinds of places to go, not just Earth, but back to the council or to go see God, or go see some other worlds, or we could even stay right here. I said, I'd like to see some other worlds. What have you got? She said she would take me to the next world that was one step from Earth towards Heaven to see how I liked it. 